Susie. Now, you'll enjoy this. Come, <laughs> Susie. Well, I think Rufus might change his mind because quite often when we have a new guest in the corner, I will uh, choose a subject in honour of, or in their honour, uh, which is somehow related to what they, they do. But today I'm going to talk about breaking wind and it's nothing to do with Rufus <laughs> at all, I have to say. Uh, but it does lie, that very act lies behind quite a few words in the English language, which may surprise you. Uh, and I'm going to start with feisty which is a great word, it means quarrelsome or spirited in some way. And that always makes me smile because back in Middle English and medieval times, it was a word for a windy dog. And it goes back to a very old verb meaning to break wind, um, which itself goes all the way back to an almost prehistoric language, pedere, uh, with the same meaning. In the 16th and 17th century, just to go back to uh, feisty, the expression fisting dog meant a farting dog. Uh, <laughs> but that was applied contemptuously to a mongrel. And this eventually became shortened to feist, and as mongrels were seen unfairly as being notoriously aggressive and combative, the idea of being feisty or spirited, uh, or a bit quarrelsome and argumentative, uh, came in, but it all goes back to that original verb. To fizzle, this is one to always make the kids laugh, originally meant to break wind quietly. So that goes back to the idea of fizzling out when they fizzle out in noise or energy. Uh, that was the original idea. And a partridge also goes back to that verb pedere, as I mentioned, because when they um, were up into flight, when they, they break into flight at, at any disturbance, the sound of the partridge's wings obviously reminded the Romans of the act of breaking wind. So I apologise for anybody, as I say, having a tea, and I apologise to Rufus, but I, it just gives me a bit of a tickle, and kids love this sort of stuff. <laughs> Very good. Well done. Thank you, Susie. As ever, 68 plays 57 and Ben.